So welcome to the AADE View. I'm pleased to be with you today to have a conversation amongst your Mac co-facilitators about what it really means to drive leadership development in our groups both at the coordinating body level, the local networking group, and of course the COI. I'm delighted to have these wonderful, very experienced volunteers with us today. They all are leaders in their own rights, in their own organizations, in their own day-to-day -day lives, and certainly in their AADE lives. What I'm going to do is, starting down with Cynthia, I'm going to have her just say her name again so you know who she is, and then I'm just going to have her tell you what leadership role she currently has besides that confusing role of MAC co-facilitator. Well, hello again. Um, can you hear me? There you can now. Hi. Find your my voice. Yes, I did. <laughs> Turn it on. Um, my name is Cynthia Lychuk. I'm a registered nurse and a certified diabetes educator, and I currently am the um, diabetes clinical manager for the North Florida Territory for Medtronic Diabetes. Um, so that's a leadership role, really. Yes. Really. Yes, it is. Yes, it, is. it, it really we, is. We totally yeah. agree with you. Okay, there you go. All right, and um, I've had a wonderful year, and I'm going to pass this microphone right over. Right? Right. I'm Jennifer Coutois. I'm the um, team leader for the State of Maine's um, AADE group. Hi, I'm Sharon Easter. I'm currently the Virginia CB Chair, and I also have, have had multiple experiences with uh, our local networking group from chapters to networks. And then um, just my job is I'm in the office manager. You all understand that terminology, right? Um, for a health system. So instead of just one department, I have five for the whole health system now. So it's been a big challenge. So have a great day. <laughs> well, you're not leaving yet. <laughs> I'm Molly McAwee Malloy. I am um, an RNCDE with the Center for Diabetes Technology at the University of Virginia. Um, I work on the artificial pancreas project during the day, and then in the evening I volunteer at the Charlottesville Free Clinic um, doing diabetes education. Um, I am a, a MAC and also a COI um, person, so I'm going to be doing the COI um, community of interest um, diabetes technology new um, community this year, so I would love to have you join me there if you want to subscribe. Um, and I'm going to let someone else define the Mac because um, I don't think I can do that justice. Hang on to the mic over here. Oh, it doesn't matter whichever one. Go, Mickey. Go, my name's. <laughs> really? You didn't do that to anyone but me. My name is Mickey Stewart. I come from Mississippi. I've been active in AADE ever since Mississippi uh, set up their first chapter many moons ago, 27 years ago, and I continue to volunteer for the CB as the team leader. I have also served AADE as a liaison to the specialty practice groups and numerous other duties as assigned. <laughs> Okay, I'm Donna Funk. I am a diabetes clinical nurse specialist, CDE BCADM. I have been a, uh, working solely in diabetes for 24 years as a CNS, and I am currently not only a MAC co-facilitator, but I am the COI leader of the most active and wonderful COI, the inpatient management group. Easy to lead. I should have said, go Donna. <laughs> so let's start with the question that's already been posed before we jump into our conversation that we want to have today about how we can coach leaders. What is the MAC? I thought it was magnificent, awesome, you know, cool people, but... <laughs> so anybody want to take a stab at what the MAC is? Go ahead, Cynthia. I'll tell you what the MAC was for me, Perfect. okay? As a MAC co-facilitator, um, this past year what I uh, attempted to do was just stay in touch with um, the membership and then to um, listen to uh, what the board had to say and then what our communities had to say, either online or in person, and um, just 
bring concerns forward, bring information back, and then to make everyone who could possibly be a member of AADE or who had an interest in diabetes know that there was some place that they could go for support, for education, for information, and that there were um, leaders in diabetes who were just like them. Um, RDs, nurses, pharmacists, exercise, physiologists, you know, <laughs> at all different levels of um, expertise and just let them know that we're a very welcoming group and a very um, friendly group and we want to have them be a part of us. Right. So the way I sort of, what I, when I'm listening to you, the kind of what I heard was you are all of these folks out here's coach their big brother, the big sister, when you have questions and you're trying to activate your groups, here is a group of people that sort of have your back. I mean, really, that's the idea, is it not? That, that, that you guys have their back. Mm -hmm. So they can come to you, and when they're struggling, they can come to you to get ideas and suggestions. But at the same time, you're, particularly you and you, I know you've got a great active group, but you're in their shoes, right? Trying oh, yeah. to make sure that group stays active. So these oh, yeah. are folks that have been doing this for a couple of years, and they've got some ideas. And in fact, the reason why we have them sitting up here is because we want you to see how they can coach you, how they can have, have your back, really. And the other thing they have is, and I loved how Kiki talked to us about finding our own voice, Sometimes as a volunteer leader, you may feel like you're one of many and you don't have a voice. So they can help you find the voice back up to the staff, to the larger board, to the larger organization. So you guys really help with the voice, right? And what do you want to add? I, I'm glad you mentioned the staff because I felt that one of the things that I did this year was to be available for the staff of AADE to help them communicate to the membership things that needed to be communicated. Very as cool. one of them. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, and between now and the time that you go ahead and you guys have to vote, just a second, we will, um, you'll have a chance to talk with them a little bit more about what their year's experience has been. Go ahead. What, what is Max in? <laughs> Members, <laughs> member, member, affiliate council. Can we, can we say that with some more, like, excitement? Try it again, one more time. Member, member affiliate, affiliate council. council. Yes. Doesn't it make sense? Yeah, I love it. I love it because we're about the members, right? So part of getting the members involved is having vibrant volunteers. And what we wanted to talk about today was what it means to do that. The reality is, is that many of us in our groups, from me talking to folks, is guys, they have a pain. They have volunteers who either have the aptitude but not the attitude or they have the attitude but not the aptitude. So we need to get those folks together. And what I'd love to do is talk a little bit about how you have helped coach in your own groups and helped coach some of these folks. How do I deal with volunteers that aren't, that aren't really contributing, aren't being there? And of course, isn't it true that one of the really tough parts about this is that we're managing our own peers? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing to, to be with your staff or whomever else, they're not your peers. Or like if you're working with a group of students, they're not your peers. And when you're sitting around the coordinating body table, I know you talk about this, when you're sitting at the coordinating body table and they're your peers and one of them is not getting the job done, it makes it that much tougher. So one of the things we did in the handout was we gave you a couple of things to think about. We talked about the key coaching elements were the notion of the ask versus the tell, those really powerful questions. Um, the second thing we talked about was focusing on the person, not the task, because this is all about really, it's developing the person, right guys? It's making a difference. And it's not about the fixing, right? Um, so it's really about bringing these leaders along, because our leaders are going to screw up. We talked about that last night at dinner, didn't we? got some of our volunteers who just absolutely screw up. And even though they screw up, we gotta, we gotta bring them along. And we talked about conversations versus lectures. And we talked about really focusing on the future success, not the past failures. So you guys have 
in our conversations as we're preparing for this, they were giving me really great examples. And so I wanna, I wanna get you guys talking a little bit. And what I really wanna do is I wanna start with this idea of the well-meaning, under-skilled volunteer. You know, that, that person who wants to do it all and they just don't have the skills. And there was a couple of examples, and I'm gonna really, I'm gonna ask Sharon and Molly both to check it. So someone hand, um, Sharon, and I'm gonna hand Molly this. And, and you've got yours on first. Sharon, tell us about how you worked around that situation. Well, one of the situations that I had, and that had, was not with AADE, it was with a different organization. But you know, everything is the same. It doesn't matter what your organization is that you're working with. I was um, the chair for a state convention. And at the, at the convention, you, you know, you have multiple people who do multiple tasks. And the reality is that not everyone has the ability to do what you want them to do. Or they may have taken on an assignment thinking they could do that assignment and then realizing afterwards that I've taken on a task that's well above my knowledge base or my experience base. So what we decided was that we do like a mentor type program where you uh, give them the opportunity to work with someone else. Not necessarily that they just be given that assignment totally on their own. And then allowing those that made a choice, and I think that's what we need to really think about is they had made a choice, but they giving them the opportunity to change that choice. And I, from my own experience, that's where I have found that we have to be able to be flexible. You can't be stagnant and you can't uh, dictate. If you give them opportunities and if you explain those opportunities, and for each of you, you know, we're the leaders supposedly, but I grow every day because I learn from someone else. And if we take that experience and what we do, then we can go forward. The good thing is, and I'm gonna share that one story, yes. we had a story where the person was supposed to be in charge of our centerpieces. And then in the, it was kind of, she was going to do la live mums for the centerpieces. When they arrived, they were dead mums. <laughs> literally sticks, okay? And so you look at these pots and you're going, okay, they're to go on the tables in the next couple hours, what do you do? And so instead of saying, oh, what a disaster, I just said, you know what? It wasn't meant to be this way. We just go forward, we had lots of teal and other things, we can just fill the pots. So you just fill them with something else and then later on say, what could we have done, not in the group, but as an individual, differently? And again, I should have followed up because I had given the assignment to someone and I have a tendency to let go. Once I've given it, I'll let go. And I'm sure we all do that. You know, they said, oh, I'll do it. Well, from that experience, she went on to grow and became a national leader in that organization. So I want you to know that where you're at now, you can grow many, many people. And that's the goal of this. And the staff is awesome. They are there for you, and you need to utilize them. And so are we. So I love, to me, what, one of the things I heard was the powerful question at the end. It wasn't like, how did you screw this up? Correct. But it was, how can we do this better? Because now that person has grown. Plus, when you dig yourself out of a hole, you know much better, right, about that hole and about how to avoid it the next time. So you, you develop yourself. You develop yourself. And you develop the skills. The next time, she's going to spec those live flowers just a little bit different, I'm sure, <laughs> differently. Uh, I think she would have checked with the person delivering them before they got yes. delivered. And you know, that's a checklist item. And I know you started to get a little hard on yourself about, well, I should have checked on her. But one of the things that we talked about um, last night was this notion of having the checklist available to folks. Um, and I know that um, Cynthia in particular talks about this great binder they have, right? And we're gonna come to that in just a moment. But the idea of having the checklist. But, but I love the story that you told us, Molly, about this whole situation. Share it with us. Okay. Um, but before I share the story, I just wanted to share one thing real Please. quick. Um, you know, once upon a time, volunteering used to be a way to learn a new skill um, or really build on what you know or to find out if you liked something. Um, and I feel like in professional organizations, we feel like if someone volunteers, they already know 
that skill. And, and it's not safe to assume that. Um, you'll, you'll never know your full potential until you push outside the box. So, um, you know, if there's something you want to do, but you don't know how to do it, you know, volunteering for it and saying, I, I might need to learn how to do this first, but I would really like to do this. Um, so, you, you know, having an underskilled, um, you know, but well-meaning volunteer is a gem, because you can really develop that person um, if they're willing to ask. Uh, so don't, don't assume, because someone says, oh, I'm going to do centerpieces. Uh, they understand what that means. Um, you know, you know, just saying, you know, hey, what are your ideas? Can I see what you've done? Um, how can I help you? What resources do you need? Um, but you know, my own well-meaning, underskilled volunteer story is myself, um, <laughs> because uh, it's so much easier to talk about yourself. So um, I volunteer at a free clinic. And, um, and every Tuesday night we have um, endocrine night. So I have, usually have a bunch of patients lined up. But there was a computer error, and all my patients got scheduled for the next day um, instead of that night. And so I come you know, from 5 to 8 for all my patients, and I had nobody. And I could tell nobody really wanted to ask me to do anything, and they kind of just expected me to go home. But I, you know, I had that time blocked out. Um, I was going to be there, so I wanted to do something, and I kept kind of, you know, asking, and people were just really afraid of, you know, to give me anything. And then finally, I saw, you know, the front desk was very shorthanded, and um, and I was like, well, I don't know how to do this, but if you show me, I will do this. Um, so I spent about 15 minutes with someone, and then I learned how to check in patients and do all this stuff. So for three hours, I was able to really contribute, but I also learned, you know, a new skill. I hadn't been trained on before. So don't be afraid to ask and say, I don't know how to do this, but I want to help. Um, because you really, you can learn new skills that way. Um, and don't, don't assume you have to be an expert to, um, to jump into something. I had no idea what I was doing when I joined this with a Mac <laughs> of facilitators. You didn't even know what it was. I didn't know what it was. I didn't even ask the question. But, um, but I learned along the way, and, and the staff was amazing, and um, it's really been a rewarding experience. So, um, so don't be afraid to ask. And what I love about that is reminding us to not be afraid to ask others to come out of their comfort zone, right? Yeah, I mean, saying, so would you do this? And if they say, oh, no, 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 well, that's OK. You ask me the questions, and I will help you get to that, get to the place where you have competence in that thing. So that's yeah, that's and a that's two a way. really great way to develop somebody. I mean, we do this, I do this in my work all the time. See somebody who has an interest in something, but they don't know how to do it. Well, I'm going to walk you through it. I'll check back in in another day or so. I'll keep checking back in. I'll wait till you're up and running and you're comfortable, and then that person can then take on that task. So I mean, it maybe takes a little bit of your time, but it's really worth it. Absolutely. So the, the um, maybe not polar opposite, but certainly the opposite of the person who is underskilled is the person who knows everything. <laughs> and on top of that, doesn't want to change. Does any of us have a volunteer who has done it the same way forever and they know that that's the way that it has to be done? Yeah. Right, right. So I was delighted to hear Cynthia's story about how she upended a volunteer. No, that's not nice to say. <laughs> no, but how did you get around that where people didn't want to change? Oh boy. Um, so our LNG, and I'm the facilitator this past year for our LNG, and we call them facilitators now, not presidents, right? Because it feels better, right? It, it means like there's more people involved and you're kind of um, getting everybody's input and that kind of thing. And that's exactly how we went about um, helping those who didn't want to change. So one of the easy things was um, the meeting agenda. Um, when we came to meeting, the meeting was already planned, and so it was more like a tell. Um, this is what's going on, this is why it's going on, this is how it's da, 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 like that. So one of the easy things to do was to send the agenda ahead and have what we were going to discuss, to discuss already out there. And then ask the members to bring back 
research. You know, go research it. Go find out what you can find out about it. Do you have an opinion? You know, one way or the other. And then when we came together, now see it's not one on one. It's, well, I read such and such that said, well, I read something else. And I know somebody who, see, it's no longer you against me, which is never the intent. Um, so the agenda was easy. And then we had a new member in our group, and um, she had been with an LNG before, and they had some ideas about how they did things. And it was the survey monkey, right? So at the beginning of the year, yeah, they sent out, and we did this too, um, the survey to all of the membership and to people who had been on and at our seminar, our annual seminar. And so we got input from our whole community and from our members. And using that information, the leadership then got together and just tallied up the results. What was important to this group? Why did they want to um, have it this way or whatever? And then we made our um, agenda for our meeting then in January with our whole membership. And then we made the calendar for the year with that and like a vision for the future, right? So where we actually wanted our LNG to go. Um, we have some wonderful uh, volunteers in our group who've been with AADE for many, many years and have many talents and strengths and we never want to lose them. We always want them there. But at the same time, we want all of those fresh and new and exciting ideas and Molly, will you teach me how to tweet? Okay. <laughs> All right. That's it. So, what, so it's kind of neat. So in order to get people to not be stuck in the same spot, you empowered them ahead of time by getting that agenda out there and said, thing, pull stuff together. So you're creating an opportunity for the conversation to go in a different direction. That is, that's just awesome. I mean, how many of us show up and say, here's the agenda and pass it out? People are not prepared and it's really hard to look at something different if you haven't had the chance to put that in mind. I, I just think that that's, that's absolutely um, brilliant. But the other thing, and SurveyMonkey is so easy to use, a simple poll you can do, um, an email gathering of information, but you can change someone when the data says it has to change. I mean, how many times are you with patients and they're not gonna change until you show them the numbers, right? So awesome, that really cool, neat things for you to do. So you mentioned though, I kind of heard this little trigger point about it, these people that have been around for a long time and we don't wanna lose them, but we do have volunteers that, well, let's not say we want to lose them, but we want to move them to a different place, right? Because <laughs> otherwise, it looks like it's their group. Yeah. And, and after a while, it's hard to get new people in. And I remember that you had a great story about that, about how you had brought some new bodies in. Can you share that? Sure. So um, I'm the, the chair for Maine, as I was saying, and um, we've been we originally started off as a small group of probably about 20 or 30 people that met a couple of times of a year before we ended up merging with AADE. And we still continue to have annual conferences, but a little bit lower level. And um, every time we would meet again, it would be the same people sitting around the table with the same conversations that we'd had each time. And as our group has continued to grow, um, it's still the same people on the committees. I mean, we haven't had that many new faces. Um, so over the past year, um, you know, we have we have grown and we have seen some growth as far as volunteerism. But um, before our last annual meeting, I was looking at the agenda and all the open spots that we still had. Um, for room moderators, for people to man our booth to get more people to actually be a member of AADE. Because you don't have to be a member of National, it could be just the state organization. And so I pulled um, the uh, reports for that, and I'm looking at the names and saying, wow, they, you know, I met them at the last conference, and just looking at the people that 
I felt were people that just may not have a voice, you know, that they didn't want to express the voice, that they didn't want to be, um, you know, they were shy, which I, believe it or not, I could be shy, but um, anyway, so I started emailing and calling people and saying, you know, you've been a member of um, the main group for a long time. Um, we have the booth that we like to promote AADE um, and get new members. Um, would that be something that you would be interested in doing? It's only for about you know a half an hour. It's at the break times in between when people are seeing the vendors and stuff. And if there's somebody else that you work with that's coming and you feel that they'd like to do it with you so that you don't have to do it alone. And um, so some of it was personal phone calls or emails if I wasn't able to get them. but. I contacted about 10 people um, and wondered, you know, what I'm going to get for a response. And everyone said yes. Everybody said, thank you for asking me to do this. And I was like so amazed that, you know, all I had to do or all anybody in our group had to do was really ask somebody, you know, that they maybe didn't feel confident enough to, to do that or comfortable enough to do it. Um, and um, you know, so many people stepped forward and it was just, it was wonderful to see more people being involved. And again, you know, uh, many of the people are, like myself, are getting a little bit older, we've been around for a long time, trying to get new people involved, the, you know, people that are younger that will be with the organization hopefully for a long time. Um, and the other thing that we did at our meeting is, um, because we've had a lot of vacancies in our board, um, I have not had a chair elect for the past year, and we had decided that we were going to do two-year terms, because after the first year, you're just starting to kind of get your feet wet and understand a little bit what it is that you're going to be doing for the group or how you're going to help to facilitate it. Um, and so uh, what we did at our annual meeting is part of it, we each person who had a position on the board stood up and spoke to the group about what their volunteerism um, included, what it was, how many hours you would estimate that it took you, you know, um, and what your position was so that we each explained it. And we also each explained what we had gained from being um, a member of the team, what it, what it meant to us, what some of the, um, you know, gains were that we had personally um, felt from that and also some of the rewards that we received. Because um, this past year, Maine being small, um, we actually were able to pay registration for four members. And what we did was we looked at who has volunteered, who's helped on different committees, who's really committed to the group, and who has not been to the national conference. And um, so we sent four, four people to that. And um, a lot of people were, you know, were like, wow, you know, you can get to do that. Well, by the time we finished our conference, we had all our volunteer positions for the board filled for um, this coming year. And um, so that was exciting. A lot of new people, people that I hadn't expected that came out. Um, and you know, our committees have grown. I've been on the, I mean, I've been involved for a long time, but other things that I had done prior were, um, you know, the advocacy committee as well as um, the co-chair and chair of the um, conference planning committee. And those have all grown. We have new members because they do have other values to them, not only what you gain in the friendships and, and stuff that you gain with your group and getting to know people, but also, you know, the benefits of being actively involved. So That's getting those new people is sort of a two-prong effort. One was, of course, the incentive. If you're mm -hmm. going to be involved and engaged, we're going to give you something back. And in this case, a chance to go to national, which is like an eye-opening, right. awesome experience. But I also, I mean, listen, when she told us the story last night about how they got everybody up, and they, in a very positive and upbeat, powerful, storytelling manner, said to the people in the room, 
this is what I got out of this time. I've had a great time. I'm going to continue to volunteer. Come volunteer with me. I mean, I think that takes the personal ask, but just creates this wonderful story around it. And then you can get some of the older people or the people who've been around and give them something else to do and let, the, let other folks to come up. So it's building your own succession by sharing your story. But the incentive helped, which was, which was very cool. You know, you were mentioning this notion of smaller jobs, and I heard someone over here talk about that earlier. And I think that, don't, how many times have you heard the answer to the question of volunteering I don't have time, right? I mean, I don't have time. And you know what? We make time for the things that we want to do. Am I right? I mean, yeah. the people who don't exercise, it's because they don't want to exercise, not because they don't have time. The people who don't volunteer for you, it's not because they don't want to volunteer for you. It really is tied to the fact that you haven't given them something they want to volunteer for. And I love the story. Let me just pass this on to Mickey. Mickey has just done some really cool things in her area where you kind of, you just take the V word out of it. You've made it simpler, right? The problem that we have had is getting our older volunteers to volunteer. They are wearing so many hats. They are such a wealth of experience that everybody is tapping into that resource. So we've begun to look at our younger membership and sharing with them key positions that we needed. One of the first positions we needed was the nurse planner position for a continuing education application. I was able to recruit a young nurse, agreed to be our nurse planner, told her that, you know, Rochelle, I really think this could work to your advantage, that you could tell an employer this. I am proud to say that Rochelle now has a job with a school of nursing setting up a special curriculum unique to Mississippi. Then, when we would have our LNG meetings, my older members were, well, this was fun. Uh, you know, and my younger members would say, hey, this was fun. How can we do more of this? Well, you know, don't weigh them down with everything. <laughs> Just go for the bare minimum. I just need a point of contact for this local networking group. I will send you the names and the emails of the people in your area. You just decide, we want to have a meeting. This is where we want to have it. I will find the funding to underwrite your expense. I'll help you with programs. And they are growing into nice leaders. And you know, I didn't think about this last night, but these two brand new LNG leaders are also the two newest CDEs in our state. There you go. How cool is that? You know what? I and this was this came through so much yesterday when you were talking about this, Mickey. But this, do you notice that she's put more of her time in helping and finding? She's not doing. She's not. You're not doing. And that's probably the most powerful thing about us getting the next generation is that we need to stop doing it and start helping others do it. Well, the, the truth of the matter is, I can't do this forever. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you know, we shouldn't be because our organization's not going to grow if we don't bring other folks into it. Um, and you know, it's interesting because I know over here, now, was it you? What, what, stand up, what is your, um, what group are you with again? I, I am with, I'm chair elect of the New York State, upstate New York, Albany area, local networking group. And, um, and, and I'm chair elect of the coordinating body for New York State, but I'm, I've been trying to get our local group going again. We've been involved, we've been around for a long time, but then when it came to the point where we had to make a decision to go with AADE or to stay alone. Everybody stayed alone for another year. And then after that year, they saw that things were crumbling and that's when I sort of said, okay, you know, we really, I, I talked to everybody and said, we have to really make an effort to, to join AADE because we're gonna be stronger and we're gonna grow. 
And we're going to get more benefit if we do that. So those were the things that I was doing to try to get this going. And then I asked people, just like, just like you did. And I was actually, I spoke in Maine. And they really have a great group up there. And what I'm wondering is when, when did you tell everybody what the group does? Was that at that conference, the annual conference, or was it another time? No, it was at the conference at one of our um, updates, either first thing in the morning or at okay. noon time at one of them. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm sure I was there for it because I stayed for everything. But they really do a good job. and. That shows how you can really get other people involved. And we're trying to get our younger people involved, too. And what, what I just I love what you're sharing and what most of you shared here is that it is the ask. It's finding the voice to make the ask. But it's also finding that that truly is your job, right? That, that, that is your job. Um, and I want to just, I want to, something else you said that goes right along that so the whole idea of what's my job is this, is this idea of, of reaching out and, and, and coaching folks when something's not happening. So one of the things I did this year as a, a Mac co-facilitator was respond to a request from the staff. They say, we have a couple of COI groups. And I, I do have to say this up front, that the community of interest groups have a, a little tougher time in some respects because we don't really deal with each other face to face ever. I mean, you can at the annual meeting briefly, but if you didn't get to go there, then you really, it's, it's, an, it's a phone email thing. Um, so we had some groups that weren't really doing a whole lot. And the staff says, you know, would you mind talking to these people? So um, I did, in fact, reach out to two group leaders, and I tried to write them, just as Peggy has said, an ask versus tell. <laughs> developing versus fixing, <laughs> um, conversation versus lecturing email that said, you know, well, I'm one of these things that nobody knows what they do, a Mac co-facilitator. <laughs> and one of the things I'd like to do is ask you if there's any way I could be of assistance in helping there be more activity in your group. Could I be helpful in giving you some pointers? Uh, could we talk about this? Can we get in touch and do more? Um, and it was a bit of a struggle, and I, I've got to say I don't think I was successful, and I, I know why not now from listening to everyone else talk. Uh, there wasn't enough follow through on my part. I threw out my email, didn't get a response, and I stopped throwing. Uh, actually, I did throw twice, but you know, it's, it's like I didn't, I didn't really hone, and I should have picked up the phone. Because it turns out really that that personal part of it just isn't going to happen with an email. And I really wasn't thinking about that at the time. So uh, uh, this is a, a negative learning experience that you can all share in. Uh, it really would have been better if I'd called this person up and said, so hi, you know, how's it going being the leader of this group? And is there anything I can do to help? Uh, you know, they told us a few things that might be useful, but please let me know. What can we do? Um, can I be helpful for you? Uh, and I think that would have been a good deal. I have seen that work with my own resource nurses at the hospital where they're volunteers. They don't get paid a dime extra. They do get paid when they come to a meeting and they mostly have to come on their own time. So they are getting paid for that as work time. But uh, I have seen them come and they say, you know, well, okay, this was a fun meeting. I'm out of here. And really, you know, the personal interaction where I say, okay, so this is what I really need from you, um, I think. And would that be useful for you, asking them what how they see it's important. I had a meeting with them just yesterday at noon uh, because th th there's there's some struggles here. We've we've had some hard times and they're having a harder and harder time participating. And I said, so they're talking about making this group be part of our ladder program that we're starting up. We're going to have to show some stuff that we're doing or they're going to think, well, this is a waste of time and money. And the group was able to produce some seriously wonderful ideas. So, uh, but it was when we were face to face that those ideas came forth, not when I said, here, tell me what you want. Uh, it, it needed to be that face to face discussion. So then the question, I don't know if this is on your lips and stuff, is it, but if I don't have face to face, 
<laughs> how can I coach my volunteer leaders? I mean, if I'm in upstate New York and I'm a CV and I'm working with somebody down in, you know, on the Jersey border, or if I'm in, oh my heavens, if you were, let's just say, for example, you were in a state that's really big, like Texas, and you have one end to the other end, how in heaven's sakes are you going to coach volunteers? I should have called. Should have called was one of them. Right. Skype. Skype. I, love, I was waiting for yes. someone to yell Skype. Is yes. Skype not awesome? I mean, it, bam, you're right there. And, the, and if you don't have Skype, and FaceTime. FaceTime. Yes. yes. Real FaceTime. time looking at someone. Because when you are calling someone on the phone, you have no idea if they're, yeah, yeah I can do that. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can do that. You only have part of their attention. But when you're face to face and they're not looking, you can tell and you can say, is this not a good time? Is there something going on that I should see? So yes, you really do need to connect. Yeah, go. Well, I've only had a, a smartphone for about four months. And I must say that <laughs> Skype is absolutely not and never will be allowed on our hospital computers. So I, I don't think I could have done that at the time, but it is a fabulous idea, which I am writing down, because now that I am smart, phoned anyway, uh, I'm ready to go. So and it is true. I mean, we can't, I mean, something, we do have firewalls to yeah. deal with, am I right? You know, so sometimes you Huge. can't do it. But to think outside the box, if you're having a difficult time and you can't get with that person face to face, wow, Skype. Skype. Or how many of you have done um, Google Hangout? Google Hangout. Oh, we got to we gotta talk? Oh, do we yes, have to talk? Lots of people so, can participate in a Hangout. And to go to a meeting is great, absolutely. And Google Hangouts. If you've got if you've got a Google account, mm -hmm. and who doesn't? Don't tell us. Don't tell us. We don't want to know. Just talk to us privately. We'll help you out. Yes, um, that is the one requirement for a Hangout is that you do have to have a Google account. But that's super simple. Don't let yes, that turn you off. Yes, it's free. Right? It right. is so right. free. All the way in the back. I'm one of those states that probably doesn't. Yes. 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 I had I learned from a volunteer manager a great thing. She says she has the two email rule. If you email her and she emails you back and you email her, she says we're not connected. Pick up the phone. If you can get try it with email. If it connects with email the first time, but once the second email comes back, she says it's time for me to pick up the phone. I mean that is so true. We got a hand up over here, and then I'm going to come to you. You know what? Can we give her a mic? Is there? Oh, I think we have all the mics. I'm sorry. We're special up here. We'll make do with one mic, ladies. So I live in and work with the rural states, and it is so much nicer. Like you can do things on email, but you don't find out exactly what they need or what you need from the people you're volunteering with until you pick up the phone. And it is a big benefit. Big, big benefit. And but but there's another alternative. I mean, what about if you can't get to that person and the phone's not cutting it and they refuse to get a Google account, so you can't do Google Hangouts, you know how some people just hold off. Um, what's the other alternative? Send them a letter. Send them a letter. That would certainly, that would like, ooh, wake them up. It's mail mail. What's another one? Text. Text. That's the only way I communicate with my kids. My husband says, I will not text. I said, then you will not communicate. That's true. What we talked about last night was sometimes there's a surrogate, right? Finding someone else who can get to that person, right? So maybe you all can't get to a volunteer leader you have, but one of these folks can help you out, right? So sometimes we have to kind of reach out. 
to, to someone else to help us out. We don't have to be the solution, right? We just have to be thinking of the solution. Facebook. Right? Say again? Facebook. Facebook. Fa Yes, I mean, finding out what, what's going to really work for them. Hand up over here. Can we pass the mic over? It came back. It came back to us. Oh. Well, hang on a second. We want to be able to hear. She's trying to get her exercise. <laughs> I skipped yoga. What could I say? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm fairly new, but is there a MAC responsible for each area? like the West, or is it of each interest? Like, if I have a problem with online stuff? You want me to answer? Oh, well, the communities of interest are indeed communities of interest, and they are all nationwide. There may be the technology, there are the inpatients, there's physical activity. So she's asking though about, the about the MAC. Oh, I'm so, sorry, about the MAC? Yeah. Yeah. No. I can answer that for you. Yeah. The yeah. MAC actually are chosen at this meeting. And it's done, you, I, I think you saw the form that Patty sent out to everybody to raise your hand if you're interested. Okay. We actually literally pull the names out of the hat. So they aren't by region. But we have five leaders that are designated for the coordinating bodies and two that are designated for the COIs. So those are your primary contact people, but they're not by area. You will after this meeting. So, so the question was, how do we know? Because oftentimes what happens is you're used to thinking, well, there's somebody in charge of the territory I'm in, right? So rather than a system that pushes you to one person, the MAC is a group of people, and you can connect with the person that, that is the person you can A, reach, or B, that you have a connection with. So if you get a chance to meet these folks, and let's say you're a CB and you're in one part of the country, there's, if there's someone that's close, but maybe you meet, I don't know, you could meet Molly or someone else, and you say, wow, she, I, I just connected with how she talked about coaching. Let me connect with her. Isn't it that fair statement? So it's not about a person, but you've got a team of people. Peggy, I also wanted to let everyone know that if you look on the newsletters that come out. Right, I was going to uh, say that. In the newsletter, it lists all the MAC leaders on the left-hand side with our information. So you could definitely get in touch with each or every one of us. I think that's the best way right. to find or that information. Right, or staff. We're always... Or staff. Or, or, there's one more. Yes, did you have a thing in the back? Oh, so I'd be happy to. to you. Come on. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Go, Nikki. Go, Nikki. Peggy knows how much I love to be the center of attention. No. Um, the MAC actually stands for Member Affiliates Council. And as I mentioned, the selection process of the seven people occurs at leadership. And then after that, we have quarterly calls with the leaders to get feedback, discuss any issues. But then we ask people to take turns posting on our uh, leaders forum, both in the uh, national leaders forum and in the COI forum. So they get conversations going. They bring up topics to get leaders to be talking to one another. We also ask people to take a turn and write an article for our volunteer leader newsletter. And I hope all of you are taking time to look at that. We put a lot of, of time into getting relevant articles. Most of them are not done by staff. They're done by your peers so that they can share their successes with you. And then they also help at this event, as you see, we're using them today, and at any of the annual meeting activities that we have. And we try really to be very um, aware of your time. We come up with a calendar so you know ahead when the calls are going to be and what you're expected to do. But I believe, Patty, you also posted like a job description or a listing of their duties so that if you can't remember all of these pearls of wisdom that I'm saying right now, we do have a listing of all the activities. But we encourage you to raise your hand. You heard that you don't have to know everything to do this job. We're here to help you, and I think the ladies will say that they really enjoyed it, I hope. All right. And you so, mentioned the, um, the e-letter, which of course is archived 
on the um, volunteer leaders right. uh, and the volunteer portal. So you can, if you missed it, let's say for example, you meant to read it, okay? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. You can now go back and actually act on that meaning. Right. right, right. Because they've all written some really cool things. You also, don't they also, or am I wrong, and this could be a cool thing for you to do, don't you also, though, help drive some conversation by posting some things on discussions? Right, on those right? discussions, right. And I also would say to you, if there is a topic that you are interested in in sharing, please, please let staff know. We're always looking for great ideas for articles, and if there's something that you want, we have a spotlight on, and it's either a CB, an LNG, or a COI. If there's something that you're doing and we don't know about it and you want to share, please let us know and we'll include you in the newsletter. I'd like to say one thing before they, I give the mic away, yeah. is that as a new person to write those articles, that's not my, wasn't my forte, just so everyone knows, okay? So you don't have to be the best writer or the best expert. If you have a passion for something that you really want to share, that you're gonna lead that with someone else, then if you don't write it exactly out, the staff will assist you. You can send what you want, and they'll read through, and if something needs to be edited, they definitely help. So don't let that be a stagnant for not taking on the role. I love it because didn't we talk about earlier that if you don't know how to do the job, that's okay, just ask? That's really right. powerful stuff. Right. Now, we, I see a hang lot on a second. Questions. We had a couple people. You have a great hand there, but we're going to go okay. get the people right behind you and then come to you. I'm from Texas, and we're huge. Yes, you are. And, we um, understand. Okay. Huge. I mean, Alaska's bigger, but not much. Um, sorry, Alaska. I didn't know uh, Alaska was bigger, so thank you. I've learned something. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I struggle with as the, the chair of Texas is really knowing what members are where. And I know that there's a map that we can access to see where our members are. One of the things that might be helpful is to actually get names, addresses, and emails of members who are in the areas that we can get to the LNGs. Because you can, you can find the members on the website, but you have to know their name to find them. Um, so, I don't know if that's something that we can do, or, uh, John, at, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, John will show you how to make that happen! We got your big issue covered, baby. We had, just, I know we have five minutes, we had yeah. two questions. Okay. okay. We'll take them real quickly. Okay. Which letter? Oh, the volunteer newsletter. Okay. John will tell you. Yeah, John can talk. It's easiest if he shows it to you. Yes, yes. They're on the. Okay, hang on. One, two, three. Look at me. Oh, I just love that. Wasn't that great when she said that? One, two, three. I oh, his eyes on me. Not look at me. I'm so sorry. So the the uh, the news the archive newsletters are available to COI leaders in their leader area. It's a forum on my AD network. And they're also available to CB and LNG leaders uh, in their respective forum. It, like Peggy said, it is easier if I show you. So if you want to come by to the optional session this afternoon, please do. Uh, but they are all there. Thank you, John. And right here, question. Well, I'd like to say first, thank you. Um, I, the view has always been one of my um, <laughs> so it was great this morning. Um, I would just like to say two things. One is, if you've ever done fundraising for ADA, for JDRF, for whomever, you know, the, people tell you they give money and then they stay volunteered because they were personally asked. So I think that's a huge, huge message. And then I would like to borrow from your tips. Could you? Quickly, each of you, tell us what you personally got out of doing this. Oh, right here. Oh. Why, would, why would I want to do this? Tell me um, why. <laughs> That's a great question. We were going to ask, okay. answer it. And right. I want to, uh, two things. We have just a few minutes. I want you to say, why has this been a great experience as a volunteer? And add to that one powerful coaching question that you've used. Down here, they'll have it Start with them. Yeah. Start with them. OK, come here. Start. Who can, who can go? Nikki can always go. There is no greater, no greater honor 
than to serve your peers. Amen. And this has been an emotionally positive event. Every time I have served. A coaching question is, are you doing okay? I have time. Oh, oh sweet, sweet. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, go ahead. Um, I, I uh, again, volunteered for this not knowing what I was doing, and, and on purpose, um, because I wanted to learn how to do this. Um, and I, um, I came to my first leadership meeting um, kind of by accident because someone else couldn't go and then something needed to be done and I was like, well, that sounds cool, so I will just try that. Um, and, you know, meeting the staff and getting to work with everybody, I, I've learned so much. Um, you all have so much information to give. Um, and the, I've just, it's been really rewarding and I, um, I, if you've ever, ever thought about volunteering, just do it. It's so much fun. And getting to go to the annual meetings and things like that uh, that my work would never have paid for um, has been awesome. So um, I've just I've learned so much from you all, and thank you for letting me just jump in cold. And a coaching question. What's the best coaching question? Mm. Am I asking somebody? Yep. Mm, what do you need? What do you need? Love it. And you wanted to say one thing. I just You've got two to, seconds. To, you know, thanks. our first speaker talked about confidence, and I wasn't very confident about any of this. And two things happened that put me right in this chair. One was uh, we had a COI group meeting at the 12 conference, and someone said in my ear when they were talking about leadership, you can do this. You can do this. Someone I really respected. And then when I came to the meeting, we were, we were having this meeting, we were moving through this session, they came to the part where they talked about Matt co-facilitators, and someone came up to me and said, I think you can do this, why don't you put your name in? And I said, well, I don't know much about it, and they said, you can do it. And I said, okay, and here I am, and it's been an amazing experience. I feel like I've grown immeasurably. So, and it's kind of neat because the coaching part of that is, if you want to coach the next person, you got to tell them. I can do it. I, can do it. I know we're out of time. Is it okay if I let them say something? Oh. Very quickly, go. What I've gotten from this is that I've grown, I've learned to meet lots of new people, I've come outside of my own box, and I think that's what we all need to think about. That, and I have taken from this, I can share. I can share. Sweet. And I, what Sharon said is exactly what I would say too, is that you know you, you gain so much from these positions that you volunteer. I feel like I get more than what I give, um, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. And so for me, it was always about inclusion, about including everybody, you know? And so I see a lot of people who were never, never felt like they could do this leadership stuff. Yeah. And so they were always the quiet person who kind of sat in the back. And believe it or not, I used to be that. I would just kind of listen and think, I wonder if I could ever do that. I wonder if I'd ever. And same as Molly, I got to leadership meeting last year as a mistake. It was, um, <laughs> somebody from Florida needs to go. We have some money in our budget. You want to go? You want to, you're going to be the LNG this year. You need to get up there and learn how to do this thing. And I came and I put my name in the box and oh my Lord, it got pulled out. And so, so I was really um, kind of nervous when it got out, but I had a great year and you guys can do that too. And so many people to thank and to um, encourage you and there you right. go. It so was to wonderful. wrap it up, I think what we can say is these ladies are fabulous and they're fabulous because they want to serve their peers. If you want to serve your peers as well, then just keep being leaders and maybe even take the next level. Thank you ladies. <laughs>